Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. All right, it's the third and final day of my short weekend. I go back to work tomorrow and work a long week. And uh, so what I want to do today is something I haven't done in a long time. Basically, this is something that used to kind of be a reg regular feature on this vlog before I moved into the house. And I kind of stopped doing it, but I want to do one today. We're going to do a restaurant vlog today. Uh, there's a place that I've been hearing about. It's Apparently, it's a uh, kind of a fast food chain. Uh, that's maybe there's a hundred hundred and fifty locations in about eight or ten uh, southern states called a fuzzies tacos and I've been hearing about it a lot people talk about it uh, people talk about it at work and I decided I want to check it out and there's kind of one yeah there's a couple of them in Waco and I'm gonna visit one of those today but it's a little early to do that right now because it's about two in the afternoon I'm not ready for dinner yet but uh, it turns out I just got the uh, replacement heating coil for my dishwasher. And uh, so I want to install that. And I'm convinced that this is going to work a little bit better because there's a bigger lip around the edge of this thing. So it should seal better. That was, I think, part of the problem is there just wasn't enough lip on uh, for the gasket to connect up to to make a good solid seal. And as you can see, see, there's a big brass piece around there which should keep that thing uh, sealed better. So I want to install that because it's been a few days since I've had a dishwasher and I'm starting to get a few dishes building up. So let's quickly install this thing and make sure it works. Yeah, you can really see the difference between these two parts here and here where this one's got this big wide brass washer type thing at the bottom and this thing's got basically nothing you almost got to wonder if somebody broke that one off or if it wasn't quite the right part or something like that this will definitely work better because once you clamp it down real good that'll make a nice solid seal around the uh the base of the dishwasher and we should never have a leak there so yeah i don't know what happened but uh that was never going to do a good job so you know who knows who knows what happened there maybe somebody broke it off or I don't know. Anyway, we got the new part. Let's put it in and do some dishes. All right, got the new one in. Uh, got it clamped down really nice and tight. Got a, hopefully got a good seal there. Uh, like I said, that should never ever be a problem again. And even if it is, maybe I could you know squirt a little uh, silicon uh, glue in there to uh, kind of plug up the leak. But I'm going to start off doing it normally because honestly, this should be good enough from now on. And then this is the back side here, and I just used a nice little box wrench to tighten that down. There's a couple little plastic fittings that basically just kind of keep all, everything dry in here, and I'm just going to put those back on. Then we'll reconnect the uh, electrical connector here. That one. And that one. Get the plastic out of the way a little bit. And that should be good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tip this thing back up on its, uh, you know, back upright normally. And let's do a little leak check before we get it back in there because, like I said, if there's still a problem, we want to find out about it now. But I don't think there's going to be. This is going to work right now, I think. All right, so I poured about two gallons of water in there. You probably can't see it, but it is in there. And basically, it's deep enough that it's covering up the, uh, the area where the uh, heat, heating element uh, passes through to the underside of the dishwasher. And if you remember when we did this last time, it was leaking almost immediately and it was a constant drip, 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 drip coming out of this fitting right here. And I don't see any of that right now. So I think we got this. So um, I'm going to drain the thing again and uh, we're going to put it back in the house. I think what I'll do is I will continue to, uh, I'll, I'll, I, like I said, I have a, a load of dishes I need to do. And I think I'll continue to run it again this time with the cover off of it so I can just make sure that while you're running the whole cycle, there isn't a problem. But it definitely looks like we fixed this problem. And, you know, an 80 buck, $80 part is a lot better than going buying a new dishwasher for five or 600 bucks, right? And it wasn't really that big of a job either. This thing was actually pretty easy to, to replace and it was pretty easy to find the part. And this dishwasher should be in good shape now. So let's uh, drain it, uh, put it back into position and run a load of dishes. All right, got the dishwasher back in, got the power on, got the water and the drain line reconnected. And uh, obviously we got power because we got the light on here. So uh, 
Uh, it also, when I first powered it up, it said it uh, had some error messages on because apparently uh, when you disconnect it, it knows that it got disconnected and thinks there's been a power failure. Hey, surprise, surprise, there was. So I cleared that out. Uh, now I want to just put the trays back in there and uh, we're going to load it up and we're going to run this bad boy. All right, all back together, all nice and pretty. Man, I, I'll, I'll admit to you, I never expected it was going to be uh, two days for the projects uh, to uh, get to, to just get the thing to stay in there properly. But you know what? That's sometimes what happens. You work on one little part of the project and all of a sudden you discover another problem. So uh, like I said, I'm going to run it with that base plate on the bottom disconnected right now. And we're just going to make sure that there aren't any further leaks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up. We're going to run a dishwasher cycle and uh, we'll come back after we go to go get some tacos and we'll make sure we still don't have a leak all right so what i've got i've got it all back in there i just kind of put a piece of paper towel under there you can see that right here therefore if there's any drips under there it'll be really obvious that there's still a problem but i don't anticipate any further things here now it's been a while since i've run a load of dishes so i'm going to end up having to probably run a couple loads i filled this thing up and and i still got a lot of stuff that needs to go in there so uh, we'll run one of these loads and go to go get some tacos and come back and see how we're doing and Then we'll hopefully be able to run another load tonight. So uh, I think this is about done, but we'll find out All right, so 99 minutes from now we'll know whether uh, whether this thing's working again should be but we'll find out then Let's go get some tacos all right, so I'm back from Fuzzy's. Uh, basically, I wasn't sure what I was gonna get, so I kind of looked, uh, you know, when, when I go to a restaurant, one of the things I like to do is kind of figure out what it is that they're known for. And fortunately on the menu, they had little stars next to uh, certain menu items that they called Fuzzy Favorites. So I tried that. Um, basically, one of the things I got, they had, they recommended something called a, uh, a, uh, a shredded brisket burrito and so I tried one of those that's what this is and I also got a spicy pork Baja taco uh, comes with a little salsa uh, hot sauce I don't know I just in my case I'd probably uh, wish for a little bit more but we'll deal with that as we come along now uh, they also serve uh, and this was an unusual for restaurants uh, for fast food kind of places but they also serve margaritas so I actually got a margarita and this they call this a fuzzy Rita and it's their house uh, house margarita and so I wanted to try that and see what that was now impressions about the place itself it seemed like kind of a fun little place um, I know I initially called it kind of a fast food place but this is kind of straddling the line between fast food and uh, an actual sit-down restaurant it's also it looks like it's a bit of a sports bar because uh, a big part of the restaurant is uh, dedicated to the uh, the bar itself and there's you know they got TVs all over the place playing uh, playing football games and baseball games and whatever it is it's on I would guess that's probably a big night on Baylor and Baylor football nights and stuff like that but uh, it would definitely be it seems like a fun place to go and visit now one of the other things that caught my attention um, was when I walked in there I didn't notice a sign on the on the door that said you had to wear a mask uh, now that's just kind of automatic now uh, for me for the last year or so that when I walk into any place that you just know you have to have a wear a mask so I was wearing one when I walked in and then when I looked around it's like none of the employees are wearing masks none of the customers are wearing masks so nuts to this I'm not gonna wear a mask either you know that's something uh, if you've read the news recently, you've noticed that our, our uh, governor, Greg Abbott, has lifted the mask mandate in Texas. Now, a lot of people uh, are really confused about that. They, they assume that what that means is that our governor has outlawed masks, but nothing is, uh, nothing is further from the truth. You can still wear a mask if you want, and businesses are still free to insist that you wear a mask, and if they insist that you wear a mask, you know they can still kick you out if you refuse to what they what get what Greg Abbott's uh, policy basically is is um, we're adults we can make up our own mind we know what the dangers are and we can weigh the risks and do what we want so you know a lot of like I said a lot of people kind of misunderstand that they think that when that Greg Abbott didn't just lift the mask mandate he outlawed masks and that is not the case at all it is still your choice to do so and uh, that just stuck out stuck out with me because that's like the first 
first place I've been to in more than a year that didn't require you to wear a mask when you're in there. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, the place looks pretty good. It was like it's a Tuesday afternoon, you know, late afternoon. So it wasn't weren't a whole lot of people in there at the time. But I bet you that place gets really pumping on Fridays and Saturday night. So anyway, let's try the food and see what it is. See what it's like here. I'm going to start off with the uh, spicy pork uh, taco. Give it a little bit of the hot sauce here. Like I said, I might have to get some tapatio for this, but. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm, I was actually a little concerned that I was maybe gonna be ordering too much food when I got both a burrito and a taco because I kind of kind of guess I thought that that was, you know, each one of them was a meal sized thing. This burrito could probably fit, uh, be called a meal, but taco is, you know, it's gonna be three or four bites and it's done. So I'm glad I went with that. I'm glad I went with two things. I'm, I might have even been able to get away with maybe a couple of tacos or something like that, but it's pretty good. Uh, it's got all the stuff you'd expect in a, in a good uh, in a good pork uh, taco, pork soft taco. So let's give this uh, this burrito a try. Like I said, this is a shredded brisket burrito. So you know I like uh, beef brisket in uh, barbecue places, and I like burritos. So and since this is a uh, fuzzy's favorite, I definitely wanted to see what that was like. So I'm gonna actually take the first bite and try it without the hot sauce, just so we get an idea of what's in there. I think I get to get a little bit more down inside yet before I hit any of the brisket because it seems like I got I can see the guac I can see uh, refried beans I can see lettuce but I don't think I got to any of the brisket yet so let's take another shot at this yeah that's pretty good too um, definitely gonna go with the hot sauce on it because well let's face it anything Mexican food I like hot sauce Yeah, that's pretty good. I never would have thought of putting beef brisket in a burrito, but seems to work pretty well. So definitely a hit there. Um, let's try out this margarita here and see if this is any good. Like I said, this is one of their uh, home things here. Oh yeah, that's good. One of the things you sometimes run into with uh, with margaritas is they kind of skimp on the t on the uh, tequila and you know you got a good good tequila when you can actually smell the tequila now this has got a lid on it so you can't smell it but you can definitely taste the tequila and that's that's a key part I think to making a good uh, good margarita so margarita is definitely a hit um, I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna eat the rest of this and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit later see you in a few minutes all right, so I finished up my dinner and uh, I think it was pretty good. Um, one thing you kind of got to keep in mind is if you're going to order like the tacos, maybe get a few of them uh, because they're like three or four bites and you're done. They're traditional street tacos, which are pretty small. And unless you have like zero appetite or a very small appetite, you're going to want a couple of them to uh, fill you up. Now, doing that and the burrito was about, the right, was about right for me. The burrito was a pretty good sized burrito. And like I said, uh, it, was, it was an interesting combination to do beef brisket in a burrito, but it worked out pretty good and I was impressed with it. So don't really have any issues with that. Now I, I have uh, decided to wait to finish up the margarita until I'm done shooting the video because it is a pretty strong margarita and I don't want to be slurring my speech at the end of this. That's no good. But uh, Fuzzy's Tacos was pretty good. Like I said, they're, uh, they got maybe 150 locations in a bunch of, uh, a bunch of the southern states. Uh, they seem to go as far west as Arizona and all the way down to uh, Florida and they're in Ohio and a bunch of places in between. So check them out if you get a chance. It seems to be primarily a Texas thing because it seems like most of the, uh, most of the stores that they have, about at least half of them are here in Texas. A lot of states have one or two of them, but there's like 60 or 70 of them here in Texas. So um, I think it's definitely uh, definitely worth a look. Um, I'll definitely go back again. Uh, might be kind of a fun bar to visit some night on a Friday or Saturday night just to kind of hang out or go watch a game if, I, if I'm in the mood to do that. So definitely recommend Fuzzy's Tacos if you want to do that. If you're into that kind of thing, check them out. Now, I got a little bit of business I got to deal with. A couple, couple weeks ago, one of my viewers, Robert Sear, uh, sent me a nice PayPal contribution. Now, I have a, uh, a regular on the live streams with the same last name. 
And so when I saw the last name pop up on the uh, PayPal page, I assumed it was them. And since I usually talk to them on the live streams, I figured I'd hold off and thank them personally on the live stream. Well, it turns out they aren't the same people. It's just somebody with the same last name. So I apologize, Robert. Thank you so much for your PayPal contribution. And I hope you understand why I made the mistake and didn't get back to you a little bit quicker. So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.